Well, hello folks. So, today's video. Uh, I think I got a little serious. Uh, what it is is that uh, I just sat down, I'm drawing and talking at the same time. Um, and uh, I wanted to bring up something about something that I had seen, uh, which was all to do with dyslexia, uh, which is a pro uh, I'm gonna try that one more time. Uh, something that I um, find myself not always addressing, right? Um, I like showing my art. Um, and uh, I did call myself the dyslexic artist, so I think I need to address every once in a while. And so that's what today's about. So please sit down, uh, have a little watch, or stand up, do whatever you want. Uh, drink a coffee, drink a tea. I don't care. Have a sandwich. Whatever makes you happy. But sit down, uh, listen. Um, I think that uh, I guide you to the direction of the video that I saw, which was on TED Talks. And um, I just really, really got excited by it. Uh, so that's kind of what this is about. So sit back, watch, enjoy. Uh, if you can give me the uh, like, love that. Uh, if you can do the uh, subscribe, woohoo, yes. And uh, okay, well, I try that again. Uh, <laughs> the bell for notification, that would be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So there you are, folks. So enjoy. Hey, guys bit of a different video today. So the thing was, uh, I was sitting down in front of my television there looking at YouTube, and I was watching TED Talks. And I love the TED Talks, because they're so much fun to watch. And I like science, and I like being intrigued by finding out information. But the talk that I saw was by a gentleman named Dean Braganier. Braganier. Oh, jeez, let me just spell it out for you. B-R-A-G-O-N-I-E-R. -E and it was the gentleman's name. And so, anyways, I started listening to this gentleman. And what it was, was a talk about dyslexia. And it really hit me hard. But what I really loved about it was the fact that uh, what he was talking about just made so much sense about the schooling that we have nowadays. And the fact that 20% uh, of the people that have dyslexia, you know, uh, is about what we have in our population. I just said that kind of wrong. But anyways, in our population, we have around 20% of the people are dyslexic. Now, what is dyslexia? It is not just seeing letters and numbers backwards. It's much more than that, right? Because if it was just something like, as simple as that, then I think I would not probably have to gone through the things that I had gone through in my life, right? Um, you know, the bullying, the name calling, all that kind of stuff, right? And then one of the things that he brought up was the fact that people who have trouble reading, right? Um, actually, uh, when it comes to this feeling of shame for the fact that they can't uh, read and write is people who actually feel about the same shame as they would for incest. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty scary in actual fact. I think to myself, wow, no wonder... There's so many people out there that are like that, that hide it, right? And that's the reason why I decided to go with the name, right? Because I thought to myself, I'm going to call myself the dyslexic artist. Why? Because I don't want it to be shame. I don't want it to be something that I have to hide from. But it is something that I've hid from for years. And I still do today. I've got to be honest. I still do in certain ways. I still feel that at times I don't really allow myself to be exposed and that so giving myself this name is why I decided uh, or it does expose me to it I have to uh, kind of say something but I've noticed lately I've been doing a lot of drawing lots of paintings and stuff like that but I really have not addressed anything about the dyslexic part so I thought maybe today that's what I was going to do so I would sit here and doodle and talk to you guys simply about that type of thing and uh, one of the things that he brought up was the fact that when the printing press came out, which is a long time ago, right, that uh, suddenly we changed our way of educating. See, before, we used to be more like an apprentice situation. So it was you, uh, you learn by looking and finding out, right, and being hands-on. And nowadays, we don't do that as much. Everything is just basically, you know, you can print it out. And then you also hear stuff like where kids don't have to be phonetically correct anymore, when it comes to writing and spelling. Well, I wondered, you know, why that was something that was coming up, but they don't explain it very well. 
But this Dean gentleman does explain why it could actually be something of benefit to us and how it could actually work. But the thing is that we don't always have that knowledge at hand. Thank God for YouTube, right? Because it actually helps in bringing stuff like that forward, right? And uh, I think it's great. Now, the thing is, as I'm saying, you find out that the uh, percentage of the people that are in prison have dyslexia, right? There's a huge amount of people like that, right? And a lot of people who go that direction. Because what happens is you feel so bad about yourself and terrible that you can't spell you're dumb, you're stupid, right? And I mean, I heard all those words. Even the words that we're not allowed to use nowadays. Uh, one of the things I always remember was I came to my mom and said to her, hey, Am I retarded because all the kids at school call me retarded? And I went to many different schools. I went to about five or six different schools. I think they were just basically not sure what to do with me, right? Because um, as I would be told sometimes, oh, you look normal. Wow, you look normal. That's terrible. You know, how? like as a young boy, you know, boy, girl, doesn't matter, whatever. But as a young person... You know, being told, hey, uh, yeah, we kind of thought you looked normal, but you're not, and you're not very bright. You're very stupid, right? I mean, I had teachers say stuff to me that they would never be able to say nowadays. But the thing is, we're changing. That's the best part. But the thing is, we're stumbling still, I think, sometimes. So this Dean Bragg on the air guy uh i really apologize sir if you see this video um how i say your name but the thing is that the gentleman really talks really well about the idea of how we could actually educate and find students that are in that department that are learning disabilities and have those issues that we could actually help them and find those little things that could make it better for them to learn and part of it is by in the early years not actually having to be academic or uh, learning to be, uh, you know, just printing and writing is exactly how you have to do it, right? To, to show them first. And then once they've realized, oh, well, I know what this is about, then you can start to add in the other stuff, the reading and the writing and all that, right? I know that there's so many of us that are geared to saying, oh, you know what? That's ridiculous. How can this person say that we need to you know be taking away reading and writing no, no no don't take that away that should definitely be there but the thing is at those beginning parts where they're allowing the brain to really grow and learn and see stuff that's why see the thing is you got burdened by the writing see the thing is i could have probably learned so much more but the thing was i was always either trying to figure out how to get around it or actually just totally ignoring Right? Or wasting so much time on trying to do something right by making sure that I spelled it correctly. Oh my gosh, it was terrifying. But the thing is, I did have a few teachers that would actually help me and show me things. And I started to learn that way. But the thing was, this, this, I'm, see, I'm having trouble getting through this myself. But I got to be honest with you, I really, really love this guy's talk. Um, I definitely say for anybody who's dealing with learning disabilities, a parent who doesn't understand their child or a child who, you know, what, mom and dad aren't listening to me. And, uh, you know, you're being diagnosed with the idea that you have learning disabilities, you know, dyslexia or anything else that you have. Right. Because it's more than just dyslexia. Right. Uh, one of the things that Dean brings up uh, is the fact that the autistic mind, which is really interesting, is really tight, right? Where the little information comes in, it would be really little tight columns. And these little tight columns allow a person with autism to be able to focus in on one thing and do it so, so well. But a person with learning disabilities or dyslexia, right, their columns are far apart. And that makes a huge difference. But it may, goes to show you that there's a different way of learning. I, you know what? I'm really lost on this. I'm going to have to do this again. That's for sure, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had as much trouble right now talking as I ever had. 
and that, but I'm just going to keep this drawing little going thing going happening here. See, the thing is, the minute I started to write or draw like this, I was able to start to concentrate a little bit more on what I wanted to say, but there was just so much I wanted to say, and I was just spelling it out. I think really basically what I wanted to say is, watch this guy's video. Oh, yeah, it was incredible. And what a way to learn. Like if you're a teacher, you know, student, anybody like that, take a look at this video. Check it out, right? It's amazing. Like exactly what he's talking about. And it really hit so hard as to what I have always thought in my mind, right? You know, that the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it, revolution, the industrial revolution, that kind of threw a lot of people into the, into the pit, right? Because they couldn't stay up with the same situation, you know, like, was, uh, you know, 45 minutes to learn something and then you run over and you get, you know, a break, you know, half an hour break or an hour break, right? Well, learning isn't like that. Learning is a lifetime. So why is it that children have to learn in such a short period of time and then go home and then pound it into their heads, you know, later that you've got to do this all on your own anyways, right? It almost makes the teacher look like the teacher's not valuable, but the teacher's valuable too, right? Those teachers that helped me, I definitely would have to say they had great value to them because they allowed me sometimes to uh, express myself instead of just one way in the other direction, right? Yeah. So I'm going to do this again. Well, guys, I um, was about to give up on this... Uh, whole video because I didn't feel like I was saying all the right things or getting it in the right order and I noticed uh, as I reviewed it that uh, yeah I actually did have a few things out of order but really what I was trying to do was guide you towards this gentleman uh, that I've been talking about and his name is Dean uh, and the last name is Bragabon or whatever it is I'm sorry again I'm not saying it properly but hopefully Sue can put that up on to the uh, thing onto the screen uh, but that that is what it really gets down to is that I just I was so inspired by it uh, I'm not inspired by my drawing right now but it was basically I just wanted to draw and talk at the same time and uh, so I uh, I didn't do the best drawing in the world it's kind of sloppy but I think I hopefully get across what I wanted to say and uh, yeah I just think uh, it's one of those things that uh, there's a lot of people out there um, not knowing how to approach these things. And I think this gentleman's really figured out a, a great way to approach. And uh, like you said, he was going to do a school that is simply for the dyslexic. And, that, um, and uh, he talks about uh, the different aspects of it, how it actually has benefit to it, and then how it also has... Uh, caused us a lot of problems, but also where um, in society, a lot of people with dyslexia um, are not in the best places. They're uh, high, high suicide rate, um, also high crime rate, a lot of things like that. And he really, really put it across. So that's pretty much what this is all about, this, this video today. Here, I'm gonna just, just to finish it off, I'll just put one of my little classic faces into it. How's that? Boom. Little eyebrows. Little eyelid. Oh, another little eyelid. And then a little underpowered eyelid, which would be the underlid. <laughs> and a little face. He's got a bit of a smile. And he's wearing his hat. <laughs> this is his hat. All right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh, hopefully this makes sense to you guys, but uh, please, uh, we'll make sure that the uh, information that I'm talking about is up on the screen. And uh, look it out, look it up, check it out. Um, if you can help somebody that's dealing with this, definitely it'll be uh, a benefit to them, I think. There you are. That's my day. Well, folks, there you are. Um, I think that, uh, the drawing itself was okay. Um, but I was just like, I was talking and excited and that, and then I was not worried about 
doing a really nice drawing today. It was kind of just draw, you know. So thank you for uh, watching and paying attention to that little bit of it. Uh, but really what I want you to pay attention to was the actual information. And that's all it's about. Because I hope that, you know, with live videos that uh, somebody catches something, they see it, and then they get some information from somewhere else. I'm totally fine with that. I love that idea. Um, and I think that's a great way to do it, right? We can always pass on little pieces of information. Um, I think I've lived uh, a life with dyslexia, but I haven't really understood it always, every aspect of it. And I need to know a little bit more, so I watch TED Talks and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just the way that he talked about educating that I thought was magnificent. So, enjoy. And uh, today, be cool like a big bull moose. And remember, wear your pants. <laughs>